2019, General David Berger, Commandant of the Marine Corps, bluntly stated that a great deficiency in the training and education of Marine leaders existed. The deficiency lay in lack of opportunities to practice decision making against a thinking enemy. General Berger challenged all Marines to use wargaming to fill that gap. Marine Corps University embraced that challenge by developing its own plan for the integration of educational wargaming to support the curricula of its schools. And here at the Brute Krulak Center for Innovation and Future Warfare, as MCU's think tank environment for cultivating critical thinking and creative problem solving, we have executed a number of different educational wargaming activities that leverage our own internal wargaming proficiency as well as that of our community of interest to make wargaming an integral teaching tool across professional military education programs. This presentation will lay out the Krulak Center's approach to educational wargaming and highlight how that approach has successfully supported a wide range of learning outcomes. While our model focuses on educational programs, we think that it can be readily adapted to the training and educational requirements of units around the Fleet Marine Force, as all Marines are decision makers and all can benefit from the mental reps and sets against thinking human adversaries which wargaming can provide. Let's begin with the Krulak Center philosophy of wargaming. We get away from the one game to rule them all mindset, which says that everyone has to play the same game and that the game has to model everything under the sun to be considered useful. Instead, we're guided by three themes that we've honed in the course of our wargaming support to the schools here at Marine Corps University. The first theme is that different levels of PME require different games to support different learning objectives. The second is that game content and execution do not need to be hopelessly complex in order to be useful. Third, the greatest promise for successful educational wargaming comes from leveraging talent that's already extant in the individual marine or soldier or sailor or guardian. And we keep a fourth unofficial theme in mind as well. It's based off something General Charles Krulak, 31st Commandant of the Marine Corps, once told us. Wargaming should be fun. Fun is an emotional response generated by a deeper cognitive engagement with the subject matter, which reflects the adult learning approach of andragogy. Now we'll go into different examples of how the Krulak Center has executed this philosophy in its support to MCU schools. This first example comes from a regular introductory wargaming event we provide to the MAGTAF instructional group. The game is Friedrich and uses the Seven Years War as a backdrop to discuss great power competition. This relatively simple game nevertheless gives players a number of challenges. It includes deception and hidden information, as players don't know their enemy's strength until the beginning of a battle. The deployment posture of France and Russia's armies highlight the challenge of expeditionary logistics. Just as conflicts are for America's armed forces today, for the 18th century France and Russian teams, this war was an away game. Failure to protect extended supply lines means those players need to go back to their starting positions and fight their way in all over again. This game also presents the challenge of coalition operations. France, Russia, and Austria have a common enemy in Frederick the Great, but different national objectives, which means you can't always count on your allies to fight their hardest against Prussia. This next example highlights a unique event conducted at Expeditionary Warfare School last academic year. One of the Krulak Center's non-resident fellows, Sebastian Bay, created a custom war game called FMF Indopaycom, built around a Marine Littoral Regiment and a Chinese Marine Corps Task Force. The game features different scenarios in different regions of the Pacific, and focuses on ground combat, long-range fires, logistics, and naval units that players can task organize to achieve their scenario objectives. Each side can also invest in joint capability cards, which abstract different strategic and higher echelon fires, maneuver, interception of missiles and aircraft, operations in the information environment, and C5 ISR assets that a company grade officer could reasonably expect to encounter and employ on a future joint all domain battlefield. This aligns with the learning objectives for EWS, which are integrating warfighting functions across a combined arms marine air ground task force engaged in joint operations. This game was built to do that and was run for two days straight at EWS with the entire student body of over 200 American and international military students fighting each other in a maritime campaign. Now we'll move to our intermediate level schools, where again, different learning objectives require different games. Command and Staff College seeks to develop leaders with the knowledge required to serve as commanders and staff on MAGTAF, service, joint, and interagency organizations while the School of Advanced Warfighting develops lead planners and future commanders 
with the creative intellect to design and execute joint campaigns and naval expeditionary operations. The Krulak Center used the commercial war game Operational Art of War 4, which is a hex-based computer game with a powerful scenario editor. We tailored the scale and the level of the units involved based on the educational scenario for each school. Command and Staff College focused on a modern-day Malaysian Peninsula scenario, and the School of Advanced Warfighting was running a historical World War II scenario around Singapore. We built each scenario into the editor and then executed them based on the larger exercise framework each school used. Command and Staff College ran it asynchronously, and the School of Advanced Warfighting ran it in real time. The Krulak Center has also supported wargaming for individual student projects and with partner agencies, again leveraging different games for different objectives. Seen here is the Wargame Command Modern Operations, which features high levels of detail with modern equipment sets in the air, space, and naval domains. We ran a scenario on command with the TCOM Warfighting Society to do an assessment of how some aspects of expeditionary advanced base operations might play out. Additionally, we supported a student at EWS who used the Command War Game as part of their non-traditional research fellowship. This student used Command to evaluate some of the broader problems confronting Marine Corps artillery units that were transitioning from conventional tube artillery to rocket artillery. The student then briefed the results generated by the War Game to the leadership of the 12th Marines Artillery Regiment to aid in this conversion process. Another aspect of our student support is the annual Innovation Summit organized by the Krulak Center, which highlights the top student research projects from each school at the end of the academic year. Seen here is a war game created by an Air Force student at the Marine Corps War College called Kingfish Ace, which explores the agile combat employment concept for expeditionary airfield operations conducted by the Air Force. The student thought the best way to teach this concept was to build a game where players had to grapple with all the different aspects of it, such as sustaining fuel, medical support, parts for maintenance, and force protection, all while generating sorties and maintaining the ability to move rapidly in an environment where to stay stationary is to be targeted. The student built the game with the hope of exposing his Air Force brethren to it and let them learn about the agile combat employment concept before they needed to execute it for real. Wargaming tournaments are an extracurricular activity offered by us at the Krulak Center that provide both cross-school interaction for the different student populations and a chance for friendly competition while maintaining the focus on outthinking a human adversary. Every year we run the Sea Dragon Tournament, changing the style of game to keep it relevant each year and also to expose students and faculty to different wargaming methods. Last year we used a web-based game called InfoChess hosted on the Naval Postgraduate School's Global Echo server. InfoChess includes hidden pieces, electronic warfare, and psychological operations in addition to standard chess rules. The year before that, the Sea Dragon Tournament used the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency's Proteus software that focuses on multi-domain operations, and which the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab recently accepted as a formal tool for wargaming the Marine Corps' force design process. The Krulak Center also supports other tournaments run within MCU, such as last year's inaugural Horner Chair Tournament that featured classic cardboard counter and hex map battles from the age of Napoleon. Finally, the Krulak Center maintains a digital repository of wargaming resources on MCU's PME website called The Landing. The site features practitioner handbooks from other American and allied military war colleges, recommendations on game manufacturers and game titles used at the Krulak Center and Marine Corps University, and a digital catalog of over 120 games held by the Gray Research Center as part of their collection of strategy and tactics magazine. We hope you've enjoyed this overview of the exciting educational wargaming activities conducted at the Krulak Center in Marine Corps University. If you'd like to know more, follow us on social media or visit us at the Gray Research Center at Marine Corps University in Quantico.